awesome. Looks like we are all here and everyone is doing well. I love it. So here is the first thing that you're going to want to know about the live stream that you are seeing right now. If you are watching me on either Facebook or YouTube, I'm not going to be watching the comment section over there. So if you want to interact with me and chat with me, um, you should head over to Twitch. Um, where I will be watching the chats, alright? So that's um, twitch.com slash insectopia2015. You can find the, um, the links in either of your comment sections. Awesome sauce. So I figured we would just, um, just kind of get going. I know it's, I don't know, after midnight or something, but this is when I tend to get motivated to play with bugs and to, to do things right about after midnight. I don't know how many of you guys out there are late night people, but I figured um, might as well try and see um, and see what we can get. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Just checking. Very good. Okay. All right. So we are looking at the collection and we're going to start kind of sorting these to order. Now, um, when we're talking order, that's a fairly large group of insects. So we're going to take and we're going to collect all of the beetles and we're going to put all the beetles together. We're going to put all of the bees, wasps, and ants together. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the butterflies and moths together. And then we're going to see kind of start rough sorting them because we can start sorting them by family to I also. All right, get some of these pins out of the way. All right, so we have um, this little empty unit tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start by collecting any of the, let's see. Who do we want to start with? Let's start with flies because this is going to be this is going to be a smaller unit tray. So we might as well start with the little flies that tend to get in our way. That's fine. All right, so I'm going to grab these two little guys that uh, we spread their wings and then maybe here. I've got an idea. Net wing beetles. Very good. Alrighty. Um, I only have, we have a number of caddis flies. So I think that we can probably sort caddis flies into this tray. Um, caddis flies are trichopterans. So I was collecting them as adults. A lot of times they will come to black, they'll come to black lights. They hold their, um, they hold their wings like a tent over their body. Um, and when they are immatures, caddis flies are really fun because they spend all of their time underwater and they build themselves little homes. Let's see, finding a couple more. I know that there's more in here. Here they are. And we've um, collected a number of caddis flies all over the country actually now. So we have some from Pennsylvania in here so far, but I'm sure as I'm watching these labels, we're gonna find a couple from other states too. Um, we did collect a, like a crazy number of grasshoppers, but our grasshoppers, some of them are so large that their abdomens and their back legs are still drying. And I don't want to take them off of the pins until they are, until they're very much ready. All right, I'm gonna get the fish flies out of the way. <laughs> Little beetles. Grasshopper. Very good. Aha! 
This is what I wanted. All right, so we've got our Luna Moth. So we've got our Luna Moth unit tray. All right, all, she's all by herself now. So we can start stacking some butterflies and moths in here with her. Um, I only have the one drawer right now, so I'm really working on um, kind of, um, I'm really working on not using up a lot of space in my collection. Um, when I go back through these individuals and have to identify them, I'm going to have to unshingle these moths. But as it is stands right now, I can go ahead and kind of layer the moths on top of each other. As long as their wings aren't touching, they should be fine, right? So we'll just stack them on top of each other. And this is what's called shingling. Um, when I was working at the A.J. Cook Arthropod Museum, so that's the Michigan State's um, collection, I was working on digitizing their swallowtails, so it was my job to unshingle and then reshingle all of the swallowtail butterflies in the genus Papilio, which is the largest genus of swallowtails, and it took me all summer. Um, but I got all types of experience in shingling butterflies and moths. So we just very carefully, <clears throat> all right, we start from left to right, and we just start taking and making sure that you're giving enough room in between the pins, but it's okay if the, um, the wings overlap a little bit. And then we're going to give it a little bit of space for the next row, and then we're going to start the next column. What you're really watching for here is making sure that the labels of the moths don't hit the wings of the ones you're going over because the labels can sometimes get a little bit tricky to kind of tuck them underneath the wings of the, of the neighboring moths. Okay, so we've got all of the... Let's see, I think, yeah, we've got all of the butterflies and moths that are off of the spreading boards into this one unit tray. Um, I have, I have two more trays of sphinx of moths that I have to take off, and there's no way they're going to fit into that tray. So I have, um, sphinx moth, this sphinx moth, and this is, um, this is actually a notodontid. I believe it's Gloveria arizonensis. But um, this is another moth. And then we have the sphinx moth, this silk moth. Um, this is another of the notodontid that we were just looking at. And then another sphinx moth and a different species of silk moth. And so we're going to actually be able to pull all of these off eventually too together. Um, but those ones, because I knew that the grasshoppers weren't done drying, I knew that the, that I don't want to touch the sphinx moths until the grasshoppers are at least done drying, right? The grasshoppers are, those will probably take longer than the grasshoppers, is what I'm getting at. Okay, so I'm looking at the collection and trying to determine what would be kind of the, the, the next largest order of insects that I've collected, and that would definitely be the coleops or the beetles. Um, I guess I, I spent a little bit of time heavily collecting beetles this trip. Um, you know, that's okay. Beetles have to beetles have to have their time in the light in the spotlight too. You know, Darwin started off as a coleopterist or a scientist who studied beetles. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working. This is the other. I only have two of these kind of um, these kind of double wide unit trays. So I'm going to fill this one with beetles, and I'm just going to start by collecting the longhorn beetles because the longhorn beetles are going to be the largest beetles of the bunch. All right, so I know this guy was spending a little bit of time spinning, so we're gonna have to make sure that he um, 
stays stable. You see how he's kind of shaking a little bit in the unit tray and he's uh, moving it a little bit. Now it's not because, I'm going to admit, it's not because this guy is spinning on the pin because I would have already put a little bit of glue on him. It's because he's actually so heavy that the weight of his body has the ability to spin the pin in the styrofoam. So I just go ahead and I put two pins on either side of him just to make sure that he doesn't spin and injure any of his friends. All right. Longhorn beetles are known for being fairly large size beetles, but they you can find them also very, very tiny. Um, these big, big guys are generally in the genus Prionis, but we're going to identify them all together, and I'm really excited about it. Um, although... See, get these guys out of the way. Um, this individual right here, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right one. Yep. So this longhorn beetle right here, um, yeah, it's actually already identified because it was identified by the person who collected it for me. This is um, Stenapsis solanensis, and John Watt collected it for me in Arizona this year, and it made me pretty excited. So um, now it just now it has his name in my collection, which is really cool. All right, so it looks like those are going to be my big longhorn beetles. But as I'm looking around the collection, I have a number of longhorn beetles that are also pretty little. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull all of the longhorn beetles. So any of these guys who have these really long antenna and these elongate bodies, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> Maybe I grabbed them all. Okay. I think that might be all of them. No, nope, here's one more. There is the last one. I thought I saw one more. There we go. All right, so we've got our longhorn beetles. Um, the next, what looks like most common beetles are going to be, I'm going to start collecting all of the click beetles. So click beetles, I don't know if any of you guys out there have ever, um, have ever played with click beetles in the past, but, um, they have this fun body shape where they're kind of, um, they come down to a point on both ends. You can see they're kind of like teardrop shaped. But um, when we're looking at these guys under the microscope and when I start sharing pictures of these guys with you, you'll see that underneath their bodies, there's this joint that connects um, their head to their pronotum or their head to their first segment of their thorax. And it helps them kind of pop their neck. And if they land upside down, they can use that mechanism to flip themselves up into the air and land on their feet. I spent a lot of time, I spent a lot of time blacklighting when I was on this road trip. So um, if you guys don't know, I was on a road trip and I drove from Philadelphia all the way to Arizona and back. And I made a pit stop in Michigan in both directions. So it was more like uh, Philadelphia to Michigan to Arizona to Michigan to Philadelphia. <laughs> but it was a great time and I collected every night and set up black lights, set up the black light most nights. Um, if we see any more of these longhorn beetles kind of shifting and shaking, I'm going to have to start adding more pins around them. We don't want them to be hitting each other because then they'll knock off their beautiful antenna, and that's sad. Oh, cool. The big, there he is. Like, I thought I collected a larger click beetle. There we go. That would be the biggest click beetle that I collected on this trip, but it's nothing in comparison to the size of what an eastern-eyed click beetle is. 
Oh, hey, here's another longhorn beetle. As we're going through and looking, that's probably going to happen. We'll probably find a couple bonus, bonus friends. Don't grab your friend's antenna. That's not nice. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and collect some grasshoppers. How about that? So grasshoppers, uh, or the grasshoppers I'm going to start collecting are going to be short-horned grasshoppers in the family Acridity. I, um... glued one or two of these guys' legs back on, but you'll never guess which ones they were. Ha ha ha. Unless you go back and watch my Twitch streams, then you would know. So what I'm doing is carefully stacking these grasshoppers next to each other, but making sure to be really careful about their antenna. You'll notice that there, some of their antenna I didn't pin back as well as I should have, so they're kind of this, this guy specifically, his antenna is kind of out and about, um, which means that he might, um, he might lose his antenna at some point. That would be sad. Um, when we're pinning insects for, when we're pinning insects for a museum quality collection, you want to make sure that you're tucking the legs and the antenna, because when you tuck those body parts, you end up protecting them. All right, so I collected all of the acridids or the um, the shorthorned grasshoppers, but I do have more. So this these guys are going to be in the order Orthoptera. Um, so they are with grasshoppers are grouped in with katydids and crickets. Um, so we can go ahead and pull katydids and crickets too because we're sorting to order right now. So this guy's a Jerusalem cricket. We've got two of those that we collected in um, Arizona in Coconino National Forest. Um, they came out so heavily all over the campground. They were coming out and crawling around, and these two actually came to the black light, which I thought was really cool. Um, in Texas near Dallas... We found dwarf um, pygmy grasshoppers. Look at the little that that guy's a grasshopper, ladies and gentlemen. He's only about a half inch long. I measured him because I was curious. And this one's also a pygmy grasshopper, but it's even smaller. They're so cute. And um, I've been in the process of of um, taking pictures with my microscope and posting them on Facebook and Instagram. And so if you guys want, I'm sure I will eventually get some pictures of these little, of these little pygmy grasshoppers. And, um, when we're going through, so this is our first, so this is our first sort. We're just going through and grouping them by orders. And then what we'll end up doing is we'll go back through and we'll say, all right, let's work on this order today. And we'll just work on the orthopterans. We'll work on the grasshoppers or the Jerusalem crickets. And we'll see if we can um, identify them. And we'll do them all in one live stream, hopefully, depending on how long they take us. Let's see. All right, it looks like I got all of these guys. Guys and gals. All righty. Oh, no. Can't pull him yet. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Alrighty. So, um, let me... We've got to clear this guy out a little bit. So we're going to pull some flies out. Got lightning bugs and diving beetles and weevils and scarabs. Oh, man. So I'm just making sure that everybody in... I'm just making sure that everyone in this tray is going to be a beetle. Um, so I'm just going through and pulling out anyone who's not a beetle, which would be you. You're not a beetle. Um, you're not a beetle. You are. This guy's a ground beetle. I probably have a number of ground beetles here that I'll be able to put with him. 
Oh, hey, we've got, this is another species of firefly, so we can put the fireflies next to each other. Little friends. Look how small the fireflies are. Look how small the fireflies are in comparison to the longhorn beetles. That's wild. My little friends. They said, we're trying. We just can't be as big as you. Alrighty. Ooh, ooh. Alright. This longhorn beetle, this third one, is also shaking too much for me. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to support all three of these first longhorn beetles. They say, hey, why you got to try and part? Why you got to try and mess with your friends? Alright. Ground beetles. That's not a ground beetle. Ground beetle. I hope you guys are all doing all right today. So I'm seeing if I can just, let's see. I'm gonna get these guys packed up a little closer and we're gonna start being really serious about just pulling all of the beetles instead of sorting them to family. Because what we can do is we'll just grab all of the beetles first and then next time we'll sort them to family. And I'm um, sorry if you guys hear the cat meowing in the background. That would be Lemmy. He thinks he's alone. When Lemmy, the cat, thinks that he's alone, he'll grab, he, we, he finds his toy, we call it his girlfriend, and he'll pick it up in his mouth and he'll walk around the house and he'll meow with it in his mouth. Very loud. It's like he's calling to it. And it's, um, it's just like a, a little um, material mouse. We kind of laugh about it. I'm like, haha, Lemmy's got a girlfriend. But he really, he really goes at it sometimes. Alrighty. We've got this friend here, this guy with the orange and the black tips. This is um this is a netwing beetle. Oh look at the how cool it is to see all the beetles together. Aw. That's so fun. Alright. I'm pretty excited about having this collection identified and sorted and um, just like, you know, organized. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start another tray for the beetles. Um, I'm going to start, let's see, I'm going to start this tray and we're going to make it, we're going to fill it with beetles. And this tray next to it, we can fill it with bees, wasps, and ants. So we're going to put these two guys right next to each other. These two are Chrysina species. Um, I absolutely love them. And if we wanted, we could even, here, let's move him over for a minute. He's, yeah, let's get some, get some buddies moved first. That's a fly, that's a stink bug, he's a true bug. It's a wasp, just a beetle. It's a beetle. 
this guy. So what? This guy's a good one. All right. Oh no! Don't drop the friends. At least he didn't break anything. Okay. So if we wanted, once we get, we have to get our this guy. I forgot to get his label done, but we can look. Those are three of the four species of Chrysina. I'm gonna grab the other one. Because I have Chrysina Bayeri too. Might as well grab it while we're doing this. And I know Bayeri is labeled. So we can put it in here. Yay! Look how pretty! All right, so these are the four species of Chrysina in the United States. They're what are known as the jewel scarabs. All right, um, they used to be in the genus Plusiotis for, um, for the people out there who are interested in old taxonomy. Um, so this first one here, um, let's see. Three of the four of them can be found in Arizona. Numbers one, two, and four across can be found in Arizona. The third one can only be found in the um, in the Davis Mountains in Texas. Now, um, if you look, this guy right here, he's got these green and silver stripes on his elytra, and he's called the Glorious Jewel Scarab. I think he's probably one of, I don't know, I kind of love them all. I don't know if I could pick a favorite. The second one right there is what we call Chrysina lacantii, and it's the first time I ever collected it this year, so I was really excited. Um, this specimen, this specimen is actually the second specimen that I collected of it. The first one I collected is right here. Yeah. The first one I collected was this one, and you can see that there's that huge difference in size, and that's a male-female difference. The first one I collected was a male, he's going to be smaller, and the second one's a female, she's going to be bigger. Now, um, this dudette, or dude right here, I don't know his, this one's gender, um, this one's Chrysina wood eye, and so if we flip it upside down, we might be able to see it has, it has metallic blue feet. And that's kind of difficult to see in the light, but I will definitely be grabbing a picture of it. And this is Chrysina Bayeri, and it has purple legs. And I think all four of them are absolutely gorgeous. I think that I, I kind of love how unique each of them are, and they all, like, they all iridesce, which is kind of the best. All right. So we're gonna put Wood Eye back in his unit tray because Wood Eye still needs a Wood Eye still needs a locality label, and we can't put him into our tray without a location label. All right. Tiger beetles. All right, we're going to put the tiger beetles up here. Tiger beetles are a lot of fun also. Um, tiger beetles also tend to be iridescent, which is definitely something that I love. I love seeing like the, the metallics in insects, especially in beetles, because the metallics in a lot of beetles, they generally don't fade over time. Um, that's because... Um, that's because the colors in, on a lot of beetles are not, um, they're not pigmented colors. They're actually crystalline colors. 
All right, so um, that means it's actually the structure of the exoskeleton and how the light like fragments on the crystals that let us see the color. And because it's that way, the color actually never fades. Whereas a lot of insects like grasshoppers and crickets and dragonflies and katydids and caterpillars, all of those are pigmented colors. Um, a lot of the greens um, are pigmented colors, and so over time, they fade out. And some crickets and grasshoppers fade almost to white over time. Let me check and make sure we are still doing good on all of our... Nobody's commented, having a good time. Awesome. Very good. All right, so we are looking for tiger beetles. That's what we're doing. All right, tiger beetles are big, big fans of um, space movies. Yeah, Star Wars. They love Star Wars. You know why? Because Star Wars, starships, can go into light speed, and so can tiger beetles. In fact, well, they feel like they're going light speed at least, because tiger beetles can actually run so quickly that they don't have the ability to see while they are running. Their brain can't comprehend the world around them while they are running. So they have to stop and they have to look around and they have to make sure that there's no one there and then they can run again. It's wild and kind of funny to watch and very difficult to collect. John Watts actually, the guy who collected the longhorn beetle from me for earlier, is um, a, um, is a tiger beetle expert. <clears throat> All right, so we are looking for beetles. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and line up all of the blister beetles because I've got a number of blister beetles and they are all very different. They have very different, um, colorations on their backs. And I thought that that would be cool to show you guys all together. Um, blister beetles do tend to have lots of, like, they have long legs and long antenna. So sometimes when you pin them up, they kind of can look really leggy. But I tried my best to keep all of their legs kind of tucked and controlled and together. All right. I'll check in for any more blister beetles that I see really quick. Okay, won't see any more. Alrighty, so um, as we are looking at these guys, we have our um, our jewel scarabs. We've got well, he's a little he's a crabid that could have gone with our crabid section. Um, and then we've got all of these tiger beetles. Cool. So you can see that they're iridescence, that green one on the left, you can see pretty well. The red one next to it actually has the same exact um, design on its back. It's just metallic red purple instead of metallic green. And then we've got a couple of those guys with stripies. Now we do have one more tiger beetle that isn't labeled yet, but I want to throw it next to it just so that you guys can see. So there's another very beautiful metallic green tiger beetle. Um, and once he's got a label, he'll be going right next to his friends. Oh yeah, and then we want to look at the blister beetles. So blister beetles are interesting, and if you guys are, um, the group of 
viewers that are over on YouTube, I do have a, um, a whiteboard video on blister beetles and how they actually have the ability to release a toxin called cantharidin. All right, and cantharidin um, can be used, cantharidin is an acid and it can burn and blister your skin. All right, so that's how they defend themselves. Um, their cantharidin dip um, um, isn't all the same strength, but it is the same compound. Um, and there are people out there that have the ability to use cantharidin to remove tattoos. All right, so that's how strong that chemical in the blister be on the blister beetle is. <clears throat> All right, move this nutling beetle. Move him here. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna fill the rest of this space with other species and other families of beetles. So, um, characteristics of beetles, if you weren't really sure. A beetle has four wings. All beetles, if you're their adults, have four wings. Most beetles that are adults have four wings. Um, their first pair of wings is called an, elit an elytra, so those are the hard outer shell. And then the undershell, or under the elytra, there's actually a second pair of wings that they have the ability to kind of untuck and fly with. All right. Beetles also have, um, beetles also have chewing mouth parts. That's another characteristic that, that, um, makes them different than other insects, right? So things like butterflies and moths are gonna have that long straw-like mouth part so that they can drink nectar. It's kind of fun to um, talk about insects while also trying to identify and sort things around. It's, uh, it's kind of a fun, um, it's a fun head game. All right, I think I'm closing in on having collected all of the beetles, although I believe that this is a beetle grub. So we're gonna throw that there for now. All right, so we actually have an entire row of beetles. So we're just going to go through and I can just show you them really quickly because I think that I've got them all collected. So we've got the longhorn beetles going down. Oh, let's do it this way. The, the longhorn beetles going down into some click beetles. Uh, we've got a handful of scarabs down here. Um, carrion beetles, this netwing beetle. Some diving beetles that we're going to be identifying together. Um, then... We have our box of chunky friends. All right. Um, this is actually a longhorn beetle, so he could have come in with the rest of them. He's a cactus longhorn beetle. Um, and then this is actually a dynasties. This is um, the eastern rhinoceros beetle, but she's female, so she doesn't have a horn. And um, ten line June beetles. <clears throat> and then these guys that we've been showing you. I think you guys saw those. Alrighty, so um, looks like we've collected all the butterflies and moths in the order Lepidoptera. We've collected all of the beetles. Bonus points if you know the order for that. It's Coleoptera. Alright, now we're going to try and collect all of the Hymenopterans, or the bees, wasps, and ants. And we're going to be placing them over here. Um, let's see. What about hymenopterans? So, um, I think, oh, these little two little beetles that I missed. I think that, um, bees, wasps, and ants get a bad reputation. Like, yes, the ladies tend to sting of 
a handful of species, you know, a significant number of them, but there are also a lot of non-stinging wasps out there. There are lots of parasitoid wasps that don't harm humans, and anytime someone says, ah, oh, it's a wasp, everyone thinks, oh no, it's gonna sting me. Not all wasps sting. That's all. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, I think that we are closing in on having this or oh, there we go, there's a mutilid. Bees, wasps, and ants. So um, that also includes things like velvet ants, right? So we have these friends right now, but I do have two pompilids that we're going to be adding to the collection. Pompilids are tiger hawk, tarantula hawks. You can see that. This is actually a species of ichneumon that I collected over in Gardner Canyon in Arizona. And we were black lighting and I went to go and grab one and it stung me. And so I decided if it was gonna sting me, it might as well be in my collection so that I have the story. You sting me, I pin you, right? I think that's fair. All right, I'm going through and grabbing some flies. Go ahead and throw some minor orders over here. Nectarins. Netlings. Nectarin. Look at us. I'm so happy. We have two more empty trays that we get to fill with bugs. Guys, I was afraid that I was going to run out of space, but now that we're kind of organized, um, I have more space to fill. All right. So I'm going to show you guys the couple of trays that kind of organized themselves while, um, while we were doing this. I will admit that flies are not my favorite order, um, but here they are. Um, these first, I don't know, the first half from about here over, those are all from the same place. Those are all from New Mexico and a campsite that I got so tired of the flies coming to the tent and to the picnic table that I just started sweeping everywhere and collected as many flies as I could and threw them all in alcohol because I was kind of mad. There you go. And some bigger flies that I purposely collected for fun. This, um, that one on the top left is a robber fly. But I believe they're all a, or at least three of the four of them are acylids or aceloidia. We'll have to figure it out. Um, I would say out of all of the orders of insects, flies are my least strong. Um, I never really, I never really got flies. They're, um, identifying them is all based on hairs on the body, and that just seems very difficult. Although I love identifying caterpillars, and caterpillars are all about counting the hairs on the bodies. Guys, some board entomologist out there went and decided we were going to identify caterpillars by drawing maps of their hairs. All right. And there was some board entomologist out there that labeled and numbered every hair on the caterpillar. Yeah, that happened. And that's how you identify them. All right. And these are what we call hemipterans. And so this is my container of true bugs. All right. These are the only insects in my entire drawer that we can consider bugs. 
All right, all of the other ones are insects. Now, if you don't know why, a true bug is a type of insect. Just like a butterfly is a type of insect, or a beetle is a type of insect. All right, so these true bugs have a piercing and sucking mouth part, and that's what, um, that piercing and sucking mouth part, that's what makes them a true bug. That's their characteristic. Now, I don't know if any of you guys out there have heard of the spotted lanternfly, but the spotted lanternfly is also a true bug. It has a piercing and sucking mouth part that pierces into trees. Right now, here in the United States, it's, um, right now here in the U.S., uh, it's very, very invasive, and it's spreading from the East Coast, so it's spreading from the Philadelphia region out. It's been found from... I don't know, New York State to Virginia, and then New Jersey all the way to Ohio. They're already watching out for it in Michigan, so if you guys see a spotted lanternfly, definitely go grab that and smash it. No good. We don't want them around. <clears throat> Awesome. So I think that this went pretty well. I have, all right. I did pin one spider. I will admit that. Normally people don't pin spiders. Um, you can judge me for it. That's okay. Um, normally people leave their spiders in alcohol. That's just better for characteristics and the such. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to identify it, but we're going to try. Um, and then this little drawer is, um, this little tray is just a couple of oddball guys. Um, that friend on the left is actually a species of roach. He's the only roach that I collected. Um, he's a sand roach from Arizona in the desert. All right, that middle one is an adult stonefly. Um, also an insect that's found around water bodies. And that is a damselfly. All right, so we just put through those in there because they were all the only individual of that order that I collected. Um, this guy here on the left is a mecopterin. See if you can find him. Yes! See, he's a scorpion fly. So he's got that really elongate face and he's got a scorpion tail. And this guy was collected in Benton, Pennsylvania. But I did collect another one in Quiver River. So I'm going to have to... Where's the guy I collected in Quiver River? He must be pinned in another box somewhere. I haven't gotten him labeled or something. We'll have to, we'll have to fix that. Alrighty, so I just wanted to say... Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today as I kind of sorted all of these guys to order. Um, I know it's getting kind of late. Um, and so we're going to be saying goodnight. Um, and then the next time we come back, we will be able to look at individual orders and we'll just go ahead and really sort into family and then figure out the ones that we don't know. We're going to have to figure out the oddball ones. So, um, that's going to be where it gets a little bit tricky is when we try and figure out, um, what some of these oddballs are. Why are you so odd? That's okay. All right. <laughs> um, I hope everyone has a wonderful um, rest of their night. And um, if you enjoyed this, always feel free to drop by my Twitch account and, um, and drop me a, I don't know, a like, follow me, turn on notifications, click the little bell thing, you know, all the things that people say to do. <laughs> Right? So, um, you can go and stop by my Twitch, and that's twitch.com slash, um, insectopia2015. Um, but I'm probably going to continue to live stream on all of the platforms, because why not? So if you enjoy hanging out with me and watching me on Facebook or watching me on YouTube, um, I look forward to, I look forward to cycling through comments and watching you guys there, too. All right, have a wonderful rest of your night, and I will see you next time.